In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, we acknowledge our need of God's grace and life in our lives, and we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, have a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead me and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. 
Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. We all know what it's like to receive an invitation to an event. And, you know, there are only really two possible responses to that invitation, yes or no. There really isn't uh, an in-between option. Now, the Lord offers us an invitation when he says here in the gospel, whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. He's inviting us to come to him and to believe in him. Uh, even for us who have been coming to church for many, many years, the invitation is always there to know the Lord ever more deeply. But with the Lord's invitation, we're left with that decision to go or to not go. And this uh, invitation, this choice, brings up all the big questions that we carry about life, questions of who to trust, questions of faith, wondering where it'll go if I accept this invitation. Now today we hear the story of the martyrdom of St. Stephen. We can see where his acceptance of Christ's invitation led him. It led him to a vision of heaven. Now maybe you thought I'd say that it led him to being stoned to death, and that's true, of course. But the deeper reality is that it led him to heaven and to Jesus. To answer Christ's invitation is to say to him, Jesus, I trust you. I trust you because I know you love me. And I trust that you want nothing but the best for me. Jesus, you are beautiful to me. And every time we go to Jesus and believe in him, it's maybe like a sunny and fresh start to a new day. Just like with St. Stephen, the clouds of life began to scatter and we start to see God's goodness again. But that doesn't happen without a response to the Lord's invitation. And we respond very simply. With all of our heart, even more so than in our words, we say, Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. Show me the way, the truth, and the life you promise. Give me the bread of life, always. Jesus extends the invitation again today and every day. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. There's an invitation in our mailbox. What are we going to do with it? And my brothers and sisters, once more, relying on the strength and the goodness of our God, we offer to him our prayers, our needs, and the needs of the world. We pray for the church, that her leaders will be inspired creative, and unafraid to meet the needs of the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For our local, state, and national leaders, that they cooperate in the interest of the common good and act humbly, swiftly, and justly for their people. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling financially, 
mentally, emotionally, or spiritually in this time, that their cries for aid and justice be answered. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are stricken with any illness, with grave illness, especially those uh, who are stricken because of the coronavirus, that they be healed in both spirit and body. Let us pray to the Lord. For parishes in our diocese, that those which struggle financially in these times might be supported through the generosity of their parishioners as they're able to support them. Let us pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood in our diocese, that more men will listen to the Lord's call and embrace the cross of Christian service in his name. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the faithful departed, especially Jim Bungeon, for whom this Mass is offered, that they enjoy an eternal breaking of bread and sharing of life with God and all the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these prayers and to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.